Let's go. Not too hard, girl. Not too hard. Come on, that's like two and a half feet right there. Welcome to the Trails Collective Interview Series. Wesley uh, Atkinson, is that how you say your yep. last name? That's right. Uh, how are you? Good. Very good. good. Well, you are uh, a 21-year-old ultra runner, quickly rising right. in the ranks here on the East Coast. So um, why don't you tell us uh, when you started running? I started... So not that long ago, actually. First race I signed up for would have been minor 25K. So this is running at all? You didn't run in high school yeah. and college? Nope. Oh, me neither. I started about seven years ago. I'm 28 nice. now. So uh, when I was around 21 is when I really, I mean, I ran like a little bit, but um, yeah, it was, it was a later in life start for me too. Cool. Yeah. So why Heiner 25K? You didn't like just, just like, I'm going to run like the fun 5K on the road. <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of my friends would run that race for the fun of it. So, and my mom, for the last year of high school, or maybe it was, yeah, it was the last year of high school, we signed, me and my younger brother, for their half a credit of phys ed, we were homeschooled, for the last, for half a credit of phys ed, we signed up for Heiner, Heiner 25K, and we were supposed to get at least 60 hours worth of training in to get half a credit worth of phys ed, and Heiner 25K would, was a good, a good, a good goal, too. Yeah, to um, you win <laughs> <laughs> so like I've always like wanted to go down and just try because I like I want to win an axe yeah I mean that's pretty cool and I think um what's his name uh Zach Miller I think won yep. it a couple years ago or did he win the 50k there's a 50k he did, he did the 20 he got the 25k he okay is that the same year that you did it yeah 2018, 2018. okay I and, did um what I did four times you did it four times. Oh God! Yeah, the Heiner three times, the fifty k three times, and the twenty five k once. Okay, and um, so when you ran the twenty five k, how uh, what what place did you take? One seventy. I don't know. Okay, Pretty far so, back. Okay, it first okay. Race, so, it was like the first race I well, I did a five k I guess before, but it was like the first race I ran. So it was okay. Just for fun, really see what I could do, push myself with cool. not too much training. So. Cool. So then you, First was year. that, then you did the 50K the next year, then I'm assuming. That's right. Yeah. And did you do any racing in between? Mile run. Mile okay. run, a half marathon. Okay. Mile okay. run trail. It's a, it's a, it's a fun trail race. Right? Yeah, because I looked at your ultra sign up and there were only like six or seven races. So you're mm -hmm. not super frequent, which is, which is pretty good. I mean, a lot of people jump right in and then they're like, yep. bam, 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 you know, and I mean, you're young, so you got a lot of energy. There's no like, so that's pretty cool. It shows some restraint and obviously it worked. I mean, you uh, won Eastern States. Yeah, so, um, that was a big goal. <laughs> yeah. So what was the progression like training for that? Oh, it went, went pretty well. So I trained, my training for Eastern States was most, mostly just high mileage and a slow build up to high mileage. So I was doing over the winter of 2018 and 2019, over the winter there, I built up to about 98 to 107 miles per week and held that for a couple months of a hundred about a hundred miles a week and then tapered for each race that I did. Heiner 50k that 2019 tapered for it didn't go too well because I hurt my back doing firewood. So my Heiner my 2019 Heiner 50k if you look at it I was 10th place. It didn't go too great but I was able to get my training back after that and do really well at World's End 100k and then get my recover well from that and then do Eastern State. Nice job, man. Oh, that's Wesley. That's Wesley. That's the first 100 cat. Run. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, congratulations, man. Nice working. Oh, excellent. I've been following you on the radio all day. Like, oh, there's number 10 again. There's number 10 again. <laughs> So let's get into the training a little bit then, because like sure. I, I'm interested, you know, I'm a nerd. And um, so running 90 to 100 miles a week, you say you're homeschooled. So I'm assuming that yep. helps a little. Or well, actually, you're in college now. What, you're 21. Yep. What am I <laughs> God, sorry. Um, so how, how does the training, like how does it work to hold that high mileage for that long? Because that's a long time to be running 100 miles a week. So I'm assuming you must have balanced it well with the rest and things. But like mm -hmm. what would a day look like for you? I would usually I would try to do at least 13 miles in a day. So I would do 13 miles, a 13 mile run. And some days I would do double days, like two eight mile runs. And I would do one of my main workouts would have been back to back long runs of about 20 miles to good effort, 20 milers back to back in the same week. Usually on, usually do that like a Thursday and a Friday and then an easy run on Saturday and just rest Sunday. Okay. Okay. So, but that's still a lot of mileage. Like, it what is a lot. Yes. Outside of that, like, do you? What's your job, or um, what's what, over, are you in college? Over that, when I was holding that mileage, I would have been working for my parents with their online business. So I had, I had a lot of flexibility and time, and could rest really well. I was able to get lots of sleep over the night I was able to have a good I'd probably get usually over nine hours of sleep so okay. okay I was able to have a lot of rest so what did what is your parents business uh selling things on eBay and Amazon oh okay okay oh uh, that's interesting that that just piques my mind because um like a lot of people were like buying and selling hand sanitizer <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um and so I just that's just what comes to my mind right now which is horrible but whatever yep we don't sell we hand all, sanitizer we all read it and we all shamed them so <laughs> fine um that's really cool so they were very supportive of your journey do you still very live with your so. parents yep I now though work at a cafe oh. so after eastern states I started working at a cafe a week after eastern states so one week after eastern states I started working at a cafe and so that so my training up to JFK last year was wasn't very good because my schedule changed a lot. So, so I was good just you weren't getting in the mileage or like good like it didn't I wasn't good. getting in the mileage. I was only doing about 50 60 miles a week cuz and I was getting a lot less sleep cuz I started getting up at about 5:30 to get to work early to get to work at on time. Okay, okay. Uh, I can relate actually um, to JFK. I was marathon trained, but I was not 50 mile trained. <laughs> so um, my race fell apart. Like, I mean, I ended like the finishing place that I finished is like indicates a lot better than the race actually felt. Mm -hmm. um, the last after about the marathon distance, my legs screamed for 25 yep. miles that's how it was for me i totally blew it at jfk i went I'm out way too fast when i hit that. the rail trail when i hit the rail trail i took off way too fast oh and sure really, yeah but I had, on the at i like walked like i came I, off the i came off the at like 10 minutes behind the leaders and i was like it's fine i just it was not good uh i think i was second place off the at Oh, really? I, went, I think I was. And I went way too fast on the rail trail. I think my first two splits were like, were under six minutes a mile. I think it was like a five, two five fifties. And I was like, oh no, I better back off. And Your then I backed off, off a bit. Oh my God. And it was, it was, I, at, at that aid station right before the rail trail, I switched shoes and I had gloves on over during the AT, but I took them off and I didn't think I'd need my gloves anymore. So I left my gloves. And then my shoes got untied and my hands got cold and I had to try to retie my shoes. And after that, it's just, it was just like a. A lesson in grinding. A, a while to just, just finish this race now. Yeah. But I, I was, don't know about you, but like, 
So I, I don't really consider myself an elite athlete. Um, yeah. And so when I was in that race, like, I mean, you were running with Zach Bitter. I was running with Nicole Bitter and like Cecile Floria and these women mm-hmm. that I'm like, oh my God, you can put on an I run far. Like, who am I? And then I passed them and you like, obviously were ahead of Zach for a little bit. Like, I mean, yep. how, what's that experience like for you? Like, I feel like we are sort of experiencing similar emotions. Um, <laughs> You know, so what is that experience like running with um, elite runners now? Oh, it's odd, I guess, kind of. In a way, not really, but it's fun. It's fun. That's what I guess I would put it as as fun, I guess, to be my, I guess my friends, they would be looking and be like, wow, that running with, yeah, Zach Bitter or whoever, that's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just um, a completely, like, I feel like ultra running is so much different than, like, NBA or something. You know, like, it's not like, you know, Jimmy from the block can go play with LeBron, but, like, yep. you can line up against Jim Walmsley, and I can line up with Courtney yep. Walter. You know, it's one of those things. And also, if they drop out or something, we beat them. Like, it's yep. that weird to say. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, it's just, it's very, it's. And then I, I, I don't know how much you read, like, I run far or you're in the ultra running. Like, how much of a nerd are you? Or are you pretty much like, you know, I do my thing, but it's my thing. I don't do too much reading, actually, on. I just mostly do my thing. Okay. Most, I do I do keep up. I mean, I do look to see what see what's happening with Western States and UTMB and that sort of thing. But I don't follow any big runners super closely or anything. But I mean, we know who they are, you know. Yes, it's, it's, yes. It's like I know, of course, I know who they are. <laughs> our community is pretty niche that we're yeah. we're in it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely still like a new experience for me every time when I see like someone who, when I started ultra running, like I knew of them, but like they were just this mythical thing over there, and mm-hmm. then suddenly they're right next to me, and yep. It's, that's pretty cool. So yep. what draws you to the East Coast besides living here? I mean, do you like the gnarly trails? Or I like JFK because honestly, like, the le- like if I'm trained for it, I should be able to, like, do pretty well, uh, you know, mm-hmm. um, because I've been training on the roads. I've been a marathon runner for the past year and a half, a dabbling in ultras, I guess I'd say. Um, but you picked some gnarly ultras, you know, your first 50 nope. day was like Heiner. My first 50 game was like water gap. So, um, yeah. Why do you pick those? Um, well, partly cause they're local. That would be one thing. And because a lot of people I know do run them. I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends that run Heiner every year to, to finish it. They're not actually necessarily running it to place well, but just running it to finish, have fun. So that's why I would have gotten to Heiner, and p- partly the other races know know who's running, and they're 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 fun races to run too. They're gnarly. They're they're local, fairly local. So, so when you train for races like this, um, do you do speed work like a tr- like in a traditional sense, like a track or a fartlek or um, hill repeats, or do you mostly like go to a trail and just run as long as you can on that trail i do do some hill repeats and a little bit of some intervals not on a track just timed like two minutes 30 seconds fast and then some slower easy stuff or a mile a mile at five something and then a mile at seven something and just back and forth and lots of easy running as well do you do most of it on roads or on trails mostly road yeah okay okay yeah most, it's, it's, most of my training is road i do get to the trails probably about once a week once twice a week if i did if i got to the trail once a week that'd be a very good goal but I, so i always have like that on sunday i'm gonna run my like two hour long run on a trail but then what ends up happening is and you'll find this with cafe life yeah. like i inevitably will get called into work like and I need to be done at like 8 30 and so that means I need to get up at like at the latest like 6 15 and then I'm like all right I can't go to the trail because what if I get lost and then I never bring a phone because like I don't like that and so then I'm like oh just gonna do my road loop you know so <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever experienced that but road running is a 
I, for things like that when you need to be back at a certain yeah, time exactly you can time it really well I like road running though a lot as well me too mm -hmm. it's I like going fast and mm -hmm. I I love trails but also I feel like if I save trails for the race it's even That's more right. special yep <laughs> same here I'm just so excited <laughs> yep um so we are in a period of uncertainty right now That's right. and I'm assuming you had races scheduled for 2020. So what did your race calendar look like? My race calendar would have been minor 50 K again. I wanted, want to go do really well there. And I didn't have any other races that I was signed up for, but I was, plan I was planning on doing either JFK 50 again, because I want to do good there. Yes, me too. <laughs> And, or we need if to not, crack it. we need to together yeah. from the ashes we will rise. <laughs> yes, and we will get it someday. Yep. And if I wouldn't have done JFK fifty, I would have probably done a road marathon to get a good PR. Never done a road okay. marathon race, so. Okay. Okay. That's fun. To see what Different, would happen. But fun. Yep. It's like, uh, you know, to be honest, running a road marathon is as hard. If you're pushing as hard, like you're to your capacity, it's, it's as hard as a 50 miler. Like my it body feels the same way. Tough. I mean, it's, I've never done a hundred, so I can't really vouch for you should. that. But, good. Um, I should. They're hard. <laughs> yes, you should. I, they're, they're fun. I need to be ready. Like, like you, I need to have a good build up and yep. I also need to, like, I'm not somebody that gets FOMO just for FOMO races. Like, I want to, like, want to do it. And yep. there's, like, a little glimmer that gets a little brighter, but it's not, like, glaring in my face yet. So I can't, I'm not, it, you got to commit to run 100. Because when I run 100, I want to race 100 and I want to do well. Yep. yep. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about your first 100, though. Eastern States. That's so, right. Eastern States. <laughs> take me through the race. Like, how did everything go to plan? Did you have a crew like when did I had you, a crew when did you take the lead like what's what's going on so eastern states that would have been that was that was that was a a hard race perfect it was the weather that year was perfect it was like I think that day the high was like low 70s maybe upper 60s in the morning everybody who wasn't running had jackets on so it was perfect weather to go to for a good fast eastern states time because usually eastern states it's really really warm so good weather and my crew was my parents mom and dad they were my crew for Eastern States, they would have been, they went to most of the crew accessible aid stations and just had extra things if I needed it. S gels and I never switched shoes. They, I had extra pairs of shoes and that sort of stuff. But I did not have a pacer. <laughs> I, I was, I kind of wanted a pacer, but I was just too late in looking for a pacer to get one. It was, it was like a couple weeks before I looked around, asked a few people, and it just like didn't work out. So I was just like, okay, I'll do it. I've done 100 Ks a couple couple times without pacers. I'll be fine. So, so I had no no pacer, and yeah, race went really well. So we started out. I ran with 
ran with people for about the first 15 miles. <laughs> and then 15, 15 and then after that I was alone for the next 85. Oh my god. <laughs> You're too young to have too many demons there. to work through, so I bet that wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was I didn't have any low spots except for close to mile 85 getting close to a low spot, but then I got to one, an aid station. It would have been David Lister's aid station. That was amazing. It, it gave me a huge mental boost for the next, for the next 15 miles. So really gave me a mental boost out of that aid station. That was a really special experience. So, so no low points. Did no low any, points. Like any I was, digestion, any like I, blisters, any. No, I, I'm, I don't. I don't know that I had any blisters afterward. Oh, I did lose a toenail. Yeah, I did lose a toenail. I didn't clip my toenail, so I lost a toenail. <laughs> so I lost my little, my one of my toes, toenails. But no, I don't really have much of a problem with chafing. If I use a little squirrel snupper, I'll be good to go for a, a ways. So mm -hmm. no chafing, no blisters. My digestion that day was amazing i was able to pack Isn't it in. wonderful when you have days like that when you're like wow amazing. like okay yep. you know? i was able to eat cliff bars i think i ate a cliff bar all the way in as far as mile 60 something ate a cliff bar after that then it was just just gels basically for the rest of the race okay but i was able to keep keep my calories in keep pushing keep going hard it was good any falls trying to remember I don't know if I fell or not I I think I probably I don't think I f actually full out fell but I might have slipped and caught myself back I don't know no it's bad pretty falls gnarly. the trails are pretty gnarly right yeah they are they're yeah, pretty gnarly a lot, of, a lot of elevation a lot of There's a lot of elevation yeah east coast roots and rocks that's there it is so what was your time 18 20 something. Oh, I don't wow. Know. That's really good. Like, so where, what's the course record for that race? 18, 20 something now. <laughs> oh, okay. So you yeah. have the course record. Oh, congratulations. Yep, I got the course yeah, record. That's yeah. so cool. Um, so I think that uh, I have this dream that like Western States is, you know, like the Super Bowl or whatever. Yep. Um, but I have this dream that like, there should be like the Western States and then the Eastern States and then the top mm -hmm. 10 of each race again. Doesn't that sound smart? Yeah. Because then we, like, Eastern States is just the complete ball of wax, and you need to, we need to prove that, like, just because the times are slower over here is because of our trails, when we can match up against the West Coasters. Like, <laughs> I think, I think this is something that I need to pursue, um, but right now it seems silly to do that, so I'll just keep thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, good idea. I'll keep you in the loop, you know. Cool. Yeah, during JFK, if we're, like, running together. And, you know, <laughs> there you go. Um, so in lieu of not having any races, are you, have you caught the FKT bug at all? I thought about it. I thought about going after Pine Creek Rail Trail FKT. I don't know what it even is, but I thought about, man, maybe I should look into that and go after Pine Creek. Or I thought of a few, maybe going after a few others, but I didn't yet. I ran, <laughs> I just ran really far instead. <laughs> Um, one of my friends, yeah. Cole Crosby, just like, you know, the CNO canal yeah. path, he just like ran that. I don't know if, really? he, if he got, I don't know if he got anything. It was, I think it was a fundraiser for like, you know, cool. raising money, but, uh, he, you know, you, we, we can always go down there and redeem ourselves or something. Yeah. Like, I mean, could, could be good. Um, so Ian also did tell me that you just did a 100 mile race from your house. So tell me about Bro, it. I ran for, I started in. Lawrenceville, right, right on the New York border at Lawrenceville, and then ran home. From okay, there. where's home? Uh, Lock Haven, Mill Hall area. Oh, Hall. okay. Yeah. Wow, how, how was that? Like, self-supported, or? Yeah, my dad was my crew. My dad, we had our minivan set up as an aid station, had all the aid station food in, and he would go, I was able to get, get, refill my water, well, get new water bottles that had them all pre- pre-filled <laughs> so every 10 miles about with a sh there was one longer stretch of about 17 miles 
or your dad like took a nap and you're like oh I'll just <laughs> yeah there was it was on the pine creek rail trail where there wasn't a crossing okay so was it all on trails or did you run roads? it or? was the first 20 miles was road and then i had 60 miles of pine creek rail trail pretty much all of pine creek rail trail down to jersey shore and then it would have been road the last 20. okay well the last a little more than no the last 17 I don't know somewhere in there so did you just decide to do this because you thought it would be fun or was there like kind of yes there's there's actually like more like two reasons why okay so one my one of my friends um Arlen Glick he did a really fast 100 miler in Ohio just for fun the Corona 100 he caught it so he did it for did it for fun got an amazing time and I'm like man I need to do that sometime but I was like, well, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do that sometime. I'll go do a fun hundred miler sometime. And then my boss, it was about a week later, my boss sent me a WhatsApp and was like, Hey, did you know about this challenge? And here there was a Strava. It was a challenge on Strava as like a fundraiser for uh, Ohio Wilderness Boys Camp. It's a, it's a nonprofit organization in Ohio, Boys Camp. and you pay six dollars and you can enter in this challenge and I knew some of the people that would be in the challenge and said man this will be perfect my training wasn't too great anyway and now I have off of work from the virus so it's like I've got a lot of time I'll be able to put in some good mileage for this for this challenge so and the challenge went from Wednesday started Wednesday in the middle of the week and ran to Tuesday at 7 p.m. So it's like at the beginning of the challenge, I'm like, I'll run, I'll run a long run, a good long run on Monday. I'll go, I'll go far. I'll go like maybe 60 miles. That's what I was thinking. But my friend Arlen Glick, <laughs> he joined the challenge too. I, I caught him up and told him about the challenge because I wanted him to join because he's a, he's a great runner. And he got, he got all in and on it. And so he started putting a whole bunch of miles on and he had a whole pile of miles on it. And I was in Saturday, I was like, man, I'm going to do 60 miles. You know what? I should just go a little farther and make it 100 and get a good 100 miler in. So I went for 100 on Monday instead. So I had, I had only a day, about two days to prepare for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what had your training been like going into it? Not very good. I was doing, it, was, it wasn't very good. Well rested is what I like to say. Yeah, no, I was well rested. I had a, a good restful winter. <laughs> and how long did the 100 miles take you? Uh, 13 hours. Jesus Christ. 13 hours, 14 minutes. And That's incredible. It sounds so fun too to just have like your dad just like, oh, dad, go, go get me a burger. Like, and then, <laughs> that's yep. so cool. It was fun. I'm I'm really happy with how with the time that I got, how considering how low mileage my weeks were before that. I mean, mileage isn't everything, you know. No, it's not. It's really. I mean, it's impressive sometimes, mm -hmm. but also like, you know, just consistency is more mm -hmm. like impressive to me. Just keep like you know keep your mileage and not injured is very important. That's right. <laughs> Have you had any injuries? Have you yeah, had injuries? No, I've been pretty much injury free. I've never had a running injury, specific oh. related injury. I've been, I hurt my back from firewood, but, and a few other things that put me off running, but mm -hmm. nothing from a running related injury. So outside of running and sleep, which I think sleep is the best recovery tool that there is. Do you do any like foam rolling, mobility, anything? Not much, no. <laughs> I don't do much like one, so I don't really do any stretching or or rolling out. I just I just go. It's and to be fair, I mean I work at a cafe, so I'm on my feet eight hours a day. Um well now like four to six because where hours are cut because of the virus. But mm -hmm. um yeah. I mean that arguably is pretty good ultra training. Like you're on your feet and so like if you go if you run and then you go to work, like that's pretty good. I mean yep, it well, is. it's, it's kind of like we're paid to ultra train, you know, at least. Uh, yep. That's pretty cool. Um, so Wesley, is there any place anybody I want to end the show with where people can look you up besides your 
like six races on ultra sign up. Uh, do you have any social media handle or website or anything or, um, what cafe do you work at? Like, I mean, just, just, uh, you know, give people, throw people a bone cause they want to, you won Western, I mean, Eastern States in a course record. Yep. I work at Sower's Harvest Cafe in State College. Okay. Sower's Harvest Cafe. It's, it's right in downtown college in the college. It's, it's awesome. I love working there. It's so much fun. <laughs> and do you and, think they're going to reopen after the pandemic or how are things? We're going? actually open right now. Okay. But we have just only for takeout. Yeah. But since I draw commute pretty far, I, if I, they asked if anybody wants to take or can take off or Go doesn't. On yeah. Like we, we, they, we needed, needed to lay some, but some people off. Mm -hmm. So, and I was, I, I said, sure, you can, I can take off for a month or two. So. Yeah. I mean, for this period in your life, I'm assuming you still live at home, right? With your yeah. parents. Yeah. So, I mean, th that's nice of you, you know, that's I bet, nice. you know, I bet it's, it's not ideal, but you know, those of us that can, yep. it, it's okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Any social media links or no? Uh, just Strava is all I have at the okay, moment. Okay. Just Strava. Only Strava. <laughs> The only that's one I use, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Strava's fun. I like it. <laughs> well, thank you for talking to me today, Wesley. It was wonderful to meet you. And I mean, yeah. I know I'll see you at a race at some yeah, point. You will. And uh, yeah, some year we like the next JFK, we really got to go and do it. Like we can yep. do it. Gotta... I, need, I really need to do well at JFK. My JFK yeah. just did not work out. <laughs> I feel like also with JFK, like, the weather is so unpredictable. Mm -hmm, that like, year. Oh. Really, I mean, it snows, or I've done it twice. The first year I did it, I was injured, did horrible, but it was freaking mm. green the whole time. I mean, so it's going to have to, ever, all the stars are going to have to align, but it'll happen. It will. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, and you have okay. a wonderful evening. And, all right. Yeah. Keep training hard. Cool. Cool. Thanks. That was, that was fun. Yeah.